Welcome to this week's episode of the Perceptive Readers, a podcast series made in the Product of Culture, aka Parkbooks website's office. Hi, I'm James. Welcome to this Perceptive Readers podcast. Hi, I'm James Lynch. Welcome to the Perceptive Readers, everyone, and to this special edition that is pertaining to Star Trek, a Gene Roddenberry vision. Over the past several years, I've posted two parts, part one, which was about three years ago, maybe four years ago, and then uh, part two came out, which was around two years ago, too of an article that I wrote. Uh, I, you know, I've talked about Star Trek uh, quite a bit um, as one of the uh, subjects that actually goes to show the creative outlet uh, that humans have and even need at times, uh, really a lot, to express themselves uh, really in a fuller sense of This is how I feel, and this is what I also think about on this subject. See, let's hit the keyword on subject here. Because, see, when it comes to Star Trek, the first thing that may come to your mind is, oh, it's science fiction. Yes, it is science fiction. However, to say that Star Trek doesn't dive deep into why humans do the things that they do do, you know, (laughs) as pertaining to spirituality, so to speak, would still be an understatement because a lot of that was covered. You see, you would see see sometimes persons who have written interviews and commentary, which, you know, are tons of them uh, that you could actually search on the internet. And you will see how many of them would mention Star Trek covered the social issues of the day. And that's emphasized quite a bit. Now, being a perceptive readers and following the product of culture website for a while, you know what I emphasize about on the sub on the subject of social issues, I will say in a minute what's underlying the social issues, and bam, you get right into the spiritual or spirituality issues. And this is the reason why I want to cover this on yes, it, it's a Sunday, uh, is because uh, the biggest problem, biggest problem that is really going throughout uh, the earth today is dealing with that subject of spirituality, whether people want to acknowledge or not. And see, and that's the problem, not really wanting, wanting to acknowledge it. So that, so sometimes people can say, well, the root of the problem is this over here, or the root of the problem is that. And they are still named some type of uh, man-made construct uh, to say that's the root of the problem. But still, okay, if I'm going to give you that, but then if we go ahead and <laughs> you may say square root that, and you're still going to bore right down to this uh, uh, spirituality issue as to why people do the things uh, uh, that they do. As always, I'm going to say, I'm not here to judge. I'm just, once again, laying the groundwork to you for you on this article that I'm going to cover that was a Star Trek Gene Roddenberry Roddenberry Vision Part 2. All right? Now, uh, I encourage you to read Part 1, you see, if you get the chance. But here we go, you see, and I did a Perceptive Readers on Part 1 already, I do believe, uh, as well. So, uh, think about this. Um, I talked about how Star Trek points to a time when reason and communicated good thoughts have won over the opposing forces of the two. You know, in this case, at least we know 
the earth and what some people uh, remember as them always emphasizing the federation of planets and things of that nature. But, you know, see, it had to start with the earth first, you see. And so there you have that, you know, a little bit of background on that statement why I said that. Now, uh, continuing on, I went on to uh, mention that uh, this article uh, was originally posted April 11, 2019. Okay. Now, as the perceptive readers, you see, uh, uh, know, uh, Gene Roddenberry, you see, he had like a, uh, uh, you know, many scripts and thoughts written down. And I said that his writing presents a problem. Uh, you know, uh, uh, for some in that day and maybe today. And it's because he was a creative visionary. See, that's what he was. And in the original 1965 Star Trek pilot introduction, he explained how the networks were in love with Westerns. Um, you will find that, um, in the sixties, that, uh, uh, you know, everybody uh, knew about Star Trek, really, you know, with those, uh, what, three stations that they had and maybe four was in the works or what have you. But everyone knew about that. And so I wanted to make you aware that, uh, Star Trek was very wide known. Now, what the problem that uh, Gene Ryden, uh, Roddenberry created. I'm going to name uh, two of them. See, during that time, people were really in love with the Westerns, you see. And uh, they were very popular. Uh, so when he was pitching the idea, he had to basically talk to the ones who would be funding it and everything or the networks of that time that uh, it would be more like a cowboy space movie. Which, when Gene Roddenberry, uh, you know, created his palette and everything, they realized, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. And so they really didn't think uh, some of the points and even social issues that would be coming out during the season uh, would be popular. Would even cause like uprising. And uh, which they didn't. See, and that goes to show you again the mindset of uh, people in general. And the thing that happens sometimes with mindset is you will find people at times will just let things be at times. And the only reason why it gets started up or riled up because uh, enough uh, think tanks or whatever got together and, and just started trying to drum up, you see, uh, these type of feelings and animosity that they wouldn't have otherwise. Why am I telling you that? Because you're going to see how in one of the videos that I actually uh, placed and talked about in the article shows that. It actually shows that. And so, you know, you could easily watch that episode if you wanted to. But let's talk about uh, the first one. And one of the first uh, videos in the palette if you will, uh, was called the cage. Now, if you wanted to liken what the cage is today, have you ever heard of a movie called The Matrix? No, no, there was no big time action in that way. Or, you know, The Matrix just had a whole lot of stuff going on. And of course, the, the plot was not the same either. But see, what was the common denominator? The common denominator was an individual or two individuals in this case uh, were trapped really in an alternate reality uh, of different things from beautiful scenes of paradise to hardships and, you know, very bad uh, uh, creatures in the land, so to speak. You know, and they were trapped in their way. And then, along with that, uh, the people who were not in 
their assigned matrix because you've heard me define a matrix before and it really is like a a cornered off a, a square where the one in other words what you want to say is abstract uh imaginary company wise corporate or, or what have you it's a separate entity or environment that's different from the rest of them you see where you can either work whether you know you can play or what have you and where i'm talking on a lighter term but in shows like the cage and the matrix you see how the matrix like in talking the cage K, cage is the cage excuse me can be uh manipulated and it used for even experimental uh, uh purposes and let me tell you it was a very very powerful first palette that's why you can see why it went on to last uh, uh you know several more seasons after that but it was very very powerful but that's the first episode and now with that uh, let me see if I wanted to share some other things with you that did you know, even back then, uh, there were some, um, shows, uh, or things that he did that was not normal. And some of them was he had no smoking characters because, you know, a lot of the cowboy movies had those. He didn't have no smoking characters. He, uh, also, uh, had a crew alien member designed to look like the audience perception of what the devil was. Um, he had women in command roles with high IQs. And he also had mixed skin colors, white, black, Asian, etc., working together and also in romance. Woohoo! What a shock that was back then. Make no mistake about it. But yet, even though the producers are the ones funding the film thought that would be such a culture shock to people and cause riots, did it happen? Mm, no, it didn't. So, do you see that, um, in this case, let me emphasize that even though the networks were concerned, concerns were based on ignorance and fear, the true reality of the matter is, is just some people just, you know, the majority of people just, uh, you know, went about their business. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't talk about it at the dinner table, probably. But see, that's the whole point. It gave them something to talk about. And it's interesting with a lot of things that people do today, which, you know, one day I would love to do a perceptive readers and go even deeper into a conversation that I did. I had with my father one time and it was it was pretty deep. And it was along the lines about, uh, let's just say it like it is, gossip and slander, uh, why people do it. Uh, and of course, you know, we know from the good book why uh, uh, people do it. And, and, you know, in the book of James, it just mentioned envy. You see what I'm saying? Um, and jealousy, that that's what's built into a lot of human beings. And see, and on the side thought, that's what I mean about creative expression, because when I talk about with Gene, Gene Rottenberg, and this is what I found from experience, that when people can really be creative in things at times and have an outlet in such a way, that envy or that jealousy that uh, that it says that it's in all us imperfect humans it really can be curtailed. And then you throw true love in with that. Huh, uh, you put it this way. You won't battle with it. If, if, you know, if that's really the statement as much as people think, because, you know, you know, some people that they just don't have a jealous bone in their body. But, and, you know, I always make the joke. I'm not once again going against what the good book uh, says, because it's still true overall that that is at least part of what is and eight as a human imperfection, but it doesn't mean that you can't get that under control. And so that's why I mentioned about the creative aspects of things that it does help even in imperfection, humans get it under control and to do something constructive with it. So, uh, oh, boy, now let me get right back to, uh, I went so, so far on that one that the other point that I really wanted to make uh, and now it kind of uh, slipped off my mind, uh, but maybe it'll come back to me. So 
this uh working uh together as i uh talked about before and what gene robert ah it came back to me about that conversation me and my father had okay and you see and when i said that it went even deeper than that than um than just because of envy even though the bible was talking about the root of the matter so i shouldn't say deeper than that the conversation went more into uh exactly again why people do it um why they got to have something to talk about in that area of things. And the reason I'm telling you like this is because when we had this conversation, this was one of those conversations where at times you know I had to roll over my mind anymore because I still wasn't feeling too good about it anyway. But to see him actually laugh and chuckle, you know, I... I told, and, and, and I hope, <laughs> now I know she probably uh, remember this, uh, 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 one lady I was talking to, and this was about uh, a couple of years ago, uh, where I said, sometimes it just will bear me up a little bit that that man, some of the things that would be turning me up inside, he would just be laughing, and I'm like, I just, I don't know how the man does it. But the whole thing is, See, he was going along with uh, uh, with the laughing while he was telling me about, you know, why people do the things that they do on this. And you know what I found out again? That he was 99% right. Now, still, even at my age, uh, do I have my off moments? Oh, yes, I still have them. But yet I know, uh, 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 you know, sometimes it's like the good book, I tell you the root of the matter. And then as we learn the root of the matter, then sometimes we just see all the intricate details, you see, that add up to the equation that shows, see, all this, 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 and this, and that is because of this, you see. So anyway, that's just a a, a side thought I wanted to uh, share with you. Um, But with that being said, I wanted to let you know that, uh, yeah, my father and I, yeah, we enjoyed uh, Star Trek very much and used to have some, you know, nice conversations after it, after it. But anyway, uh, you know, moving on in an article, I ended up, uh, giving you how many seasons, the three seasons when they uh, came out for Star Trek, uh, the movies, you see the original movies that came out, you see of Star Trek, uh, all the way up to one, two, three, four, five, and six, you see. Now, uh, let me see. As I continue to uh, go down through this article, I, I think I better uh, uh, read a couple of things I think you will appreciate. Uh, let's see. Hmm. hmm. Well, I think you'll appreciate the whole article. Uh, uh, but I ended up giving you a scenario and, and let me just share this with you. Okay. And then we'll close out this perceptive readers here. Uh, so I encourage you to go to Star Trek, a Gene Roddenberry vision part two, but notice I, I asked this question or stated this illustration where I said, imagine asking a king who walks past you for an opportunity to speak with him and to learn from him. The king likes your smile and sincerity. He points to one of his trusted aides and says, This person knows what makes me happy. He will tell you and even give you exercises, if you will, to help keep you healthy and strong as my subject and now friend. You look at the king with a smile. The king then says, Call me when you need me or just to talk. And so then I go on. That's the end of the illustration. And I ask the next paragraph or state such an encounter in words have come about in an illustrative sense due to these words taught by a famous prophet that sincere people exercise in a regular routine and innate desire. And so that's when I reference a good book of uh, scripture where it's in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. And it talks about what the two greatest commandments are and things of that nature. Now, I wanted to let you know that because remember when I said it would be an understatement to actually say that Star Trek 
didn't only really, uh, you know, focus on social issues, but put them in space, time, and in the future. But what the underlying reason why people were doing the things that they do or what have you is because you do see the spiritual aspect of things. I mean, they even, you know, reference a uh, good book passages at times too. So with that, I ended up putting a interview in there. Uh, and the interview was of Nichelle Nicole. See, she played Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek. And it was within the uh, first season, I think it was, uh, where she was, um, she was through, you know, um, with it really. She was ready to go back to what her background and skill set was, which was, uh, I think, theater, you know, Broadway uh, uh, type of shows, you see. And uh, uh, she had a chance to meet a man who was uh, very famous during that time period. Now, I'm not going to mention his name. I'm going to mention a quote and see if his name will readily come to mind. But the quote was, you see, he was hoping and dreaming for a day where his children and all people really would be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. Now, with that being said, see, I got to go on another side uh, thought on this, too, because this is why, you know, you heard me say over the years quite a bit, um, you know, stop judging. Stop judging. And you won't be judged. Now, who also said that quote? See, the problem, and I'm just talking from experience as well, because remember I told you, I see, you see intricate details that still stem from the root of maybe, you know, the tendency to envy and jealous in humans, that there, there's this problem that happens quite a bit where Sometimes people just are ripping each other apart, at least if you watch enough of the media at times. And remember, I'm not here to judge. I'm just telling you what be, what be happening. And there seems to be, again, this desire. See, that's why I'm bringing back again something that my father said that goes more into people just got to have something to talk about, you know? And, and like I said, it was, he had a lot of meaning and he explained it. And I, and I understand exactly what he's talking about. But my whole point is, if people are to be judged by the content of their character, however, you got to make sure that then you still have people around who are reasonable to acknowledge it, or shall I say to see it and acknowledge it, you see, to others. And this is one of the reasons why, as humans, you really still need to be able to speak up when it's necessary. Because if you don't, uh, you know, to use the expression, uh, uh, to, you know, go along just to get along, this is how... Uh, Injustice happens. This is how travesties happen. Um, because sometimes the ones who still have a bigger voice, uh, I'm not going to say that they won't touch on it, but even then, sometimes the very in, uh, resources or the very individuals that they really need to be talking to, then they won't talk to them because why? Uh, their content of their character is so maligned, even unjustly so, but now it's like they're in a different matrix. They're in a different cast. They're in a different category, you see. So the whole thing is, um, well, like I said with this interview, and remember, I'll reference Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40, um, about, you know, love and love for your neighbor, which, you know, it, it does not, um, 
single out a color is saying your neighbor, you know, that includes all backgrounds and, and colors and things of that nature. Uh, but this is what happened is Nicole, Nichelle, even though she was ready to quit, she ended up, um, like I said, getting the opportunity uh, uh, to meet this famous man. Uh, she had already written her letter of resignation and given it to Jean. And uh, Jean didn't want her to go anywhere. That's right. Jean won't know, fool. <laughs> uh, but that's another story. Okay. Now. Now, I'm not saying I say he was a fool. But, but you know, like, remember I told you again, with these, these, Hairbrain ideas of that people don't think like that. Why would you want to make a show like this or that? So you used to see that's what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, so she ended up finding out from this famous man who made that quote that he watched her, uh, he watched the show, and he emphasized. How that was the only show that they would let their children <laughs> stay up that late at night, you see, to watch this show. And you know what? He wasn't the only parent that did that. <laughs> and I found that very fascinating. So that goes to show you the effect that it was having and the effect that Nicole, Nichelle Nicole had, you see, in her role. Okay. That, that meant a lot to people in that time period that happened to have uh, that color to them their skin uh, okay bronzeness if you will and when you know when I talk about bronze that has a spiritual spirituality connotation to it too but you see I won't even go into it you can probably figure it out so the the whole thing is he uh talked her out of it because when she was saying that she was going uh, you know, going to resign or, or quit. Uh, he told her straight up, don't you do it. <laughs> don't you? She, he told her not to. And so, uh, you know, the way that she was looking, she was, uh, flabbergasted, like, I know what they're, they're telling me not to quit, you know, but he went on to say some very, very nice words to her, you see. And these words, were not empty flattery at all. That's in case somebody, remember I told you how, uh, you know, you always got somebody that got to say something. But see, speaking from someone that, yes, can still, because as you know, uh, um, I can talk about the good book quite a bit, or almost like any book or what have you, just because that's always been so enthralled to me once I really started studying it. And, but the same thing, even before that time and growing up, uh, you probably go to every single episode of Star Trek and I could probably tell you about it, really, you know. Um, still, it, it, it just, it is what it is on just appreciating somebody creative endeavors. So uh, uh, let's get back to what he was saying. He said a lot of good things, and that's why I put the video in this article. See, so I encourage you to listen to the whole video. Because here was here's the point. Those expressions that he made. Have you ever heard the expression? He's right on point. He was. That's really the way. Tons and tons of people who watch the show. And um, and also, you know, especially with, as I told you, the color, the bronzeness to them, really felt. Really felt. You see? And all coming from this creative expression of this this writer, author, if you will, of this uh, a show. So what she did was she went back and uh, after that, you know, nice meeting uh, with this man uh, who was a big fan of hers and told uh, Gene Roddenberry that she now wasn't going to quit and told him what this other famous personality said to her. And you know what Gene Rodden said, Bird said, Rodberg, excuse me, Gene Roddenberry said, he said, finally, 
somebody who knows what I'm doing here or trying to do here. You see, see, here's the point uh, before I come to a close on this. You know, I talked about earlier this week, happy times, happiness, or happier times are coming. And really, you know, I've mentioned, you know, when just, you know, it was just more of a question that might have come from somebody with a, about prophecy and things of that nature over the years. Yes, I, um, I've uh, read uh, prophecy and studied it and learned it and things of that nature. And, you know, for a fact uh, that, yeah, I believe everything, the root again of Everything that says is going to happen that's going to bring about all that happiness, it literally is going to happen. You see, it's not a doubt in my mind. It's, you know, you've heard me say it before. It's just a fact. The same way we need air to breathe is just a fact. So, so it's no question in my mind about that. And, and see, and I remember at the same time, does it mention, you know, the highs and the lows of humanity? Before this happens, and even in the time period that we're living in, yes, it does. And it even gives specifics at times. And yet, let me tell you what I gather, which no one can, uh, no one can argue about it. And, and I picked this up in quite a few places. That it was saying, even when it talks about the lows of humanity, God wants you to be happy, sincerely happy. God wants you to not be anxious. God wants you to feel strong and be strong. And yet at the same time, if the person next to you is not strong, to have the empathy to help build up that person again to be where you're at. You know, the good book also shows good times that happens even during the low periods of times. So what do I continue to uh, uh, share about the creative endeavors and things of that nature that human beings, they have a conscience that God appreciates. And that's why he even said, you know, if a person conscious is, is moving them this way or making them don't want to do this or that, he actually, you better leave that person alone because it's dangerous if you do anything to force that person to do something against their conscience. And, you know, and I've made that, uh, comparison when I've talked about even medical, uh, on things and prescriptions. And I told you anything that you are digesting that you take in your body or even as an apparatus to have outside your body or, or whatever affecting your, your skin, dermatology, all of that stuff affecting your breathing and everything. Those are prescriptions. Those are conscious decisions. Those are given to us by God. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Now, people can respect it or not, but I tell you what, according to prophecy, that's see, that's another thing to talk about happier times ahead. The conscious, the freedom to let God also have a part, you see, in molding this individual. Because remember I told you, people are made up in different ways like the different color flowers. God knows that. Like the different type of animals. God knows that. And see, haven't you heard to tell somebody, now to go tell a fish, okay, we're having an exam. Now you need to climb that tree, you know, telling the fish that's right beside a monkey. That is not an accurate test, an accurate experiment, an accurate matrix to place that fish in to determine its ability 
or even adaptability. Okay. So anyway, as you can see, uh, or imagine, uh, some of the conversations that at least back in the olden days that persons could get into just off of, uh, observing or analyzing uh, books and even person's own creative expressions at times. As you know, I will say our coffee lounge conversations, which is fine too. All the same, I hope you enjoyed this Perceptive Readers. And until next time, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality.